So in the next seven minutes or so, what I wanted to do is give you an idea of what we're seeing in the venture healthcare environment, specifically around biopharma device and tools and diagnostics. So a lot of the data you see is gonna go around those three areas. Um, you know, we're gonna talk about some highlights that I've seen so far mid-year 2016. We'll talk a little bit about healthcare investment into companies as well as who the active investors are. And then we'll also talk about exits on M&A and both the, and the IPO side. So if I look at the first half of the year, you know, we're seeing a little bit of a venture funding decline, but Series A investment and up, is up in all three of those sectors. And actually, we think that despite coming off of a high in dollars invested into companies last year, we're going to be similar to where we were last year. Crossover investors sort of retracted from investing and instead are really sort of pushing their companies into the public market. Uh, biopharma round sizes are skyrocketing. We'll talk about that just a little bit. And device remains healthy, especially on the M&A side. So... If we look at dollars invested in the companies, which is the top line, and then the light blue line is dollars fundraised by healthcare venture funds, you can see in the last two years is a 50% increase in fundraising. And we can't see that as a trend that's gonna continue. It has to come down. We know fundraising is gonna come down this year. Dollars invested in the companies are gonna stay pretty similar to what we saw last year, really based on the fact that most of these venture funds have raised over the last two years. And that means they have three to four years of active uh, investment into new companies and then another three or four years of uh, continuing to support those companies. On the Series A side, halfway through the year, you're seeing both on the device and the DX tool side, record number of Series A company fundings, which is really great to see. And Biopharma, which had an unbelievable number of companies and dollars invested in the first, uh, or in 2015, 2016 looks like it's gonna be right on that track. And if you think about Series A, specifically around indications, um, you know, since 2013, we've probably seen about 17 or so Series A companies focused in ophthalmology between device and biopharma, which puts it above like the rare orphan area, puts it above orthopedics, puts it above respiratory and aesthetics. But, you know, it sort of pales in comparison to some of the other indications like neurology at 70 companies, oncology 83, cardiovascular a little bit more at 33. Just gives you a little context. So they're still seeing some investment in ophthalmology, maybe not as much as the top indications, but you're still seeing a good amount of activity. And when you think about who the, the top investors are, corporate and venture folks in the biopharma side continue to aggressively invest into biopharma. And actually we're on a pace to exceed the investment pace for the top 10 of last year, this year. Uh, where is the money going? Really, oncology is getting the vast majority of dollars. Ophthalmology continues to see investment by the top 60 investors out there, but on, on the smaller range versus the other indications. Uh, biopharma deal size has increased about threefold from 2013. Really, it's a function of two things that we're seeing out in the market. One, bigger funds. You're seeing funds go out and fundraise again and increase the size of their fund, which means they have more money to put into more companies. And two, the fact that we're seeing a lot more tranche deals in the sector. So it's not like the 12 to 18 months of, of capital they're raising. They're actually raising three to four years of capital uh, based on a tranching system of them hitting development milestones. On the device side, there's a lot of diversity around investors. This just gives you a little bit of perspective as to where those, where those investors are that are actively looking to invest in deal. Cardiovascular has received you know, the, most, the most investment that we've seen out there. Um, you know, on the biopharma side, IPOs are down. You know, M&A is staying pretty solid, but it's coming off, you know, IPOs are coming off a really amazing last couple of years. But what's interesting is on the IPO side, you're still seeing a lot of early stage activity. 60% of the IPOs in the first half of the year were preclinical or phase one in terms of where their most advanced asset was, which is really incredible. Really, that's been uh, a reason behind that is really the crossovers. The crossovers are really the ones that are forcing these companies to go IPO, you know, building a, a 2x book size just from the inside investors in order to get them out. But that's where we're seeing where most of the IPO activity is seeing. Um, on the M&A side, we continue to see early stage M&A as well. Um, not as much on the ophthalmology side, but when we look at M&A, it's preclinical and, and phase one for, for biopharma. And even on this early stage side, even with IPOs coming back to reality, the dollar size and the number of transactions for early stage M&A and biotech continues to be really strong. 
So we're seeing $600 million median deal size so far this year for preclinical and phase one deals with over 50% of that coming in the upfront payment, which is really good news. So IPO optionality is not driving the deal size in, in biopharma M&A. It's really the, the fact that there's a lot of acquirers out there. And finally, on the device side, we're seeing, you know, what's really nice is a, st a stable M&A environment. You know, since Q2 of 2015, you've seen at least four M&As every single quarter. Uh, IPOs have sort of, you know, disappeared. Maybe you're seeing some reverse merger activity there. But really, it's, it's an M&A story. And that M&A story had, in 2015, a little bit of activity on the early stage side. That was really on the cardiovascular side, although there was one development stage ophthalmology play. Um, 2015 or 2016 so far, still seeing good M&A activity, one ophthalmology deal as a part of that, but that tends to be later stage. Um, you're seeing either CE Mark or FDA approved companies that are already in revenue are really where you're seeing the vast majority of those exits. And when you think about the dollar size in device, it's a lot lower than what you see in biopharma. And I think the number, the 9.2 number in terms of years from the close of Series A, that's a little bit of an anomaly. I think the first half of the year you saw some older companies finally get to exit. But frankly, some of those exits were really nice. So even though it took a long time, the multiple on capital invested was actually fairly strong. And you know, sort of final slide here, when you sort of think about where ophthalmology lies within indication-based um, exit analysis on the IPO side, you know, in the top five, um, the big exit side, also, you know, number six. But if you add it all together, you know, really, yeah, ophthalmology, the number four indication in terms of exit. So you continue to see, even though there's not a ton of acquirers in the sector, you continue to see strong M&A activity in the sector. So, you know, with that, it was a pleasure to give you an overview of what we're seeing out in the private venture environment. Thank you very much. Thank you.